Welcome everyone to Living with the Times. This week's Parsha Kitavo, there is an explanation of a ritual that ha happened when Israel came into the land and they went to two mountains, Mount Eval and Mount Grizim. And six tribes went on one mountain and six on another. And it was a renewal of the covenant between God and Israel and the Torah. And part of this whole ritual that before that we were told to take 12 huge stones and plaster them and to write the entire Torah on them in 70 languages. Now this sounds like an incredible feat. The uh, Evan Ezra quotes the Sadhya Gaon who held that it wasn't the entire Torah, it was all of the mitzvot in the Torah in 70 languages. So first of all, what we can learn from this is that the ultimately the Torah is meant for everyone. And the Torah actually says that when you write this out, you should write it be'er hetev, very clearly. So here there were 70 archetypal languages. And the idea was that the whole world could come and in their language read what the Torah has to say. Because eventually God will be one and his name will be one. And in the Messianic era, there will be harmony and brotherhood in the entire world. And the glue that will, that will bring us all together is the Torah. But the sages ask, how is it possible to get 70 languages, even if it's just the mitzvahs of the Torah, but let's say the entire Torah, on 12 stones, no matter how big these stones are. These weren't like buildings out of steel, they were natural stone. So the sages say just very simply, it was miraculous. However we understand it, it, uh, uh, it was a miracle that they could put all this information on this, these 12 stones. So what can we learn from this? This was a one-time event but everything in the Torah is eternal and has relevance to us. So if we look at our world today, I remember when the first computers came out and for example, there was in, in the Pentagon, there was a one of the first computers and it filled like a whole floor of the Pentagon. And in today's terms, it did a number of simple calculations. Now, we all have our, our phones. We have our digital world that we hold in our hands that through microchips stores a phenomenal amount of information and with searches, it can look up anything almost instantaneously. We can communicate with our device with virtually everyone in theory in the world, no matter where they are, instantaneously. Now we all take that for granted, but this is also the miracle of our times. And so here we see when the sages said that getting the entire Torah in 70 languages onto 12 stones was a miracle. Well, here it's not 12 huge stones. We have a little device in our hand that can bring you hundreds of thousands of songs instantaneously and thousands and thousands and thousands of books are all 
in the palm of our hand, let alone all the other things that our devices can do. So this month of Elul, I want to bring it down to living with the times, to what's happening right now. The letter of the month of Elul is the letter Yud. We're told that the month of Elul is created through the letter Yud. The Yud is the smallest of the letters. And the sages called it the little that holds a lot. You have to remember the first letter of God's four-letter name is a Yud. And the Yud represents what's called simsum, contraction. So just like, in a sense, the entire world is condensed into the palm of our hand, so the letter Yud represents the same thing. But what is it teaching for us in the month of Elo? Well, the truth is we are holy souls created in the image of God. We have infinite potential. The soul has infinite potential. And just like we're told that our brains only operate at 3 to 5% of capacity, it's the same thing with our, our potential. There's so much more that we could be doing, we would like to do, but we're not always channeling or activating our full potential. So the month of Elo, when we're doing soul searching, this is the time to really look at who we are, the power of the soul, the connection of the soul to God who is truly infinite, and to really see where we can go from here. What new things can we adopt? Can we integrate into our lives? How can we broaden our perspective, broaden our vision of who we are and what we can accomplish? So just like the letter Yud is the little that holds a lot, and the devices in our hands are a little that holds a lot, so let's make the coming year, right now it looks like little, but let's expand it and make this coming year the little that holds an enormous amount.